Hey, what's going on everyone? Soul here, and welcome to my primer slash discussion video on Dimensions and Transcendence Tier 6. So, I actually missed uh, the last Transcendence Tier, Tier 5, uh, due to just scheduling conflicts and whatnot. Um, but I am back for Tier 6, and just in time too, because Tier 6 is looking to be... Oof, oof, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a rough one. So first and foremost, I would like to thank the Tomberry Troop for providing uh, the information on some of the information we're covering in this video. Per um, the usual structure of these videos, I will start with the Tomberry Troop's um, discussion on each boss, um, you know, tips, strategy, etc. While also showing off some gameplay in the background, and then I will then move uh, to my own team, team comps, thoughts, etc. on the stage, and yeah, that's that's how I'll run this. I also want to give a big shout out to my friend Safi for providing the gameplay footage. He did record this uh, from the JP side of the game recently, so you might see some things like Oren's LD counter, for example, having like triple dumps and stuff, um, but he said he took off as many passes as he could to try and give the original um, Dimensions and Transcendence Tier 6 experience, so huge shout out to him. Um, I will have link to the Time Rare Troops website and Seppi's channel, who covers Opera Omnia content, in the description below. Uh, so you guys can go check out each and, yeah. Let's go ahead and get started, guys. We will start with the Left Crucible here in Dimensions and Transcendence Tier 6. So, this is the Left Crucible here in Tier 6. This the, There's two enemies, a Sand Kraken and Aggressive Turtle. The Kraken Orb will appear at the battle start with a 10 count. The Turtle Orb will appear at 79% HP with a 10 count. And then the Kraken Orb will disappear at 29% HP. There are actually two Orb proc effects here that you can take advantage of. One is Break V Effect slash Debuff for a plus 8 count. So, Caius, obviously. This is uh, the Caius Skate. Uh, and then there's also a Poison slash Sap damage from debuff, which is plus 5 count, which is what I imagine uh, most people, including myself, will be taking advantage of. <clears throat> the crystal color here on this fight is Black Crystal. So, Black Crystal suggestions right out the gate. Caius, Oren, Iroha, Golbez, Leon, Gladio, Shadow, Zack, Kimari, Kefka, and Garland. So, orb suggestions. Caius, only character that can trigger the first condition. The second condition, obviously, is more than enough for teams. You can use, even use a Ferris Refined Sphere if you want. It's just hilarious. Um, but don't forget, both bosses then will have to take turns then to proc the orbs since it's the sap damage. So, it's a 55 turn Lufinia fight. Luf Turtle has 13 million HP, the Kraken has 12. Brave damage is reduced between 75 and 80% throughout the fight. And Brave gain is reduced between 40 and 50% throughout the fight. So again, we are dealing with Lufinia restrictions here on the gates, or the crucibles rather. So that's, that's always nice, you know, it's a nice little breath of fresh air um, for those players that have been doing Lufinia Plus, because Lufinia Plus is, uh, is a grind sometimes. <clears throat> so, traps and off-turn damage that trigger an enemy turn can help really just take down the stage. Tanks are also helpful due to the many HP attacks here. Oren hitting both these bullets makes no surprise, and he can solo the stage for feeling ambitious. Yeah, Oren can solo it if you want to. I'm not going to do that, <clears throat> because I, you know... I'm just not going to do that. But yeah, you know, if you definitely, if you want to try it, you can. And it shouldn't be too hard. So boss abilities to watch out for. Lunatic Aggressive Turtle. The boss does a brave HP attack, so be careful about breaks. Great Geyser is a brave gain, plus AoE brave, plus AoE HP attack that grants speed up to itself. The turtle gets extremely quick and can take numerous turns back to back, so traps, counters, tanking are all very helpful here. We've seen this red turtle enemy type before where they, he is extremely quick, you know, is constantly taking turns here, high turn rates all over the place, and yeah, getting broken from him is gives him even higher turn rates, so be careful with him. The Sand Kraken has multiple attacks that can delay a target, so counter and trap characters are great here. Boss also has a brave HP attack, multiple brave HP, um, so tanky can help, as mentioned above. At 49%, the Kraken will gain max brave, which is 160,000 plus brave. So... Nothing too crazy here. The orb is easy enough to proc. Um, there are two conditions, thankfully, and one of them is sap slash, you know, poison for brave damage. That's, we have, there are so many characters here that can proc that now, so that shouldn't be a problem. The turtle, again, um, be careful being broken by him because he does get high turn rates and he's just fast in general. The kraken has a very powerful brave HP attack um, of his own. Um, so yeah, just, you know, counter characters like 
Sefi here using Orin and Beatrix. Both are fantastic. They're going to be great here. Ace with his traps after turns would be awesome. Just really anyone with a follow-up counter, etc. Um, are really going to be nice here. <clears throat> because these enemies are... It's going to be kind of like that uh, the boss rush stage we just had with those whales. Where those enemies... If you brought like a trap or counter character, those enemies just killed themselves. Because you just sat there. They kept attacking you and they kept taking damage. So it was good stuff. All right, so with that said, guys, let's go ahead and switch on over to the right Crucible now, which is against the Bastion Giant. So we do have Howl's Moving Castle appearing as a boss yet again. Uh, the orb here is appearing at the battle start. It's a 10 count. There's one orb condition here, and it's unique, uh, I guess. It, it is definitely different. Uh, the orb here is a plus 15 count launch on three consecutive player turns. Okay, so they really are trying to sell you on selfie here. A yellow crystal character is required in the party. So some yellow crystal suggestions. Selfie, Quistus, Tifa, Lael, Kais, Arden, Yishtola, Desh. Uh, orb suggestions here. <clears throat> selfie, Reigns, Tifa, Lael. Otherwise, you'll need some launch calls like Cloud, Dark Knight, Cecil, Lael, Bramza, Realm with Pandemonium, Summon, Fang, Kais, or Reigns. Fight mechanics here. 75 turn fight with 18 million HP. Brave damage is reduced between 75 and 80 percent throughout the fight. Brave gain is reduced between 40 and 50 percent throughout the fight. So, some general team themes to counter the stage. Uh, launch. So, selfie LD makes this stage very simple because selfie her LD inflicts a debuff that makes the enemy able to be launched every turn uh, until the debuff falls off. Um, and then, or you can use a launcher like Reigns, Lael, Tifa, um, multiples. Uh, if that's going to be the case, then you don't have Selfie LD. Uh, so you can use your main team launchers and then use your calls for the remaining launches up to three. Burn the castle to the ground. So because it is a massive jump, it is, again, a plus 15 count when you proc the orb, um, you can manage to kind of take your time um, <clears throat> with this stage a little bit as long as you have a reliable source of launch. Um, but again, if you're not using Selfie's LD, then you'll probably need a launch call <clears throat> to complement then your main team because again it has to be three turns in a row um, to proc that orb as the boss's hp decreases the enemy will take multiple actions so if you're giving the boss turns for some reason have a tank or hp damage mitigation ready some boss abilities to watch out for gigant punch is a brave attack that becomes higher turn rate when inflicting break or attacking a broken target acoustic pressure wave is a brave gain plus aoe hp attack Drumming War is a high turn rate AoE Brave attack that inflicts speed down on the party. And then Destruction Power will raise his stats and increase his HP damage for one turn. He will do this below the 79% HP threshold. So the biggest problem with this stage is going to be... It's kind of twofold here. Number one is the orb itself. You have to launch three turns in a row. As you can see here on screen, there is a number two next to his orb that's tracking how many launches in a row he's had. Uh, and then... Number two here is if you let this enemy attack, he is very strong. Uh, he has some very powerful attacks, and he can also get some high turn rate stuff uh, as well. So I, what I would probably suggest, and what I will be doing myself, is just delaying this enemy. Um, again, I will have Selfie's LD, so the orb is not going to be a problem at all here for me. Uh, but if you don't have that, then there are many characters that can proc the orb um, by launching having you know on demand launch but then again you will need probably a call a launch call at least one probably two or even three if you want to be super safe about it just to be able to make sure you get through this fight overall though because it is a single target boss that means that he's going to get burnt down pretty darn quick as long as you bring some big guns some firepower you know it shouldn't be a problem just you know wail away and um, watch your launch aside from that should be good to go so, uh, now that we've talked about the two Crucibles, let's move on to the Reckoning stage, because the Reckoning stage, oh boy, that is that is one, one hell of a stage here. So yeah, let's go ahead and switch on over to that one. Alright, so here we are at the final gate here. We are at the Reckoning. So, this is a two-wave fight here against two Argent Officiant and two Pur Purpure Mantis? Hmm. I don't know. They have, like, they have like flowers for heads. It's very odd. So, wave 1, the orb will appear at 79% HP with a 15 count, and it requires you to inflict 8 plus debuffs in a turn, which will then proc the orb by 8 turns. Wave 2 does not have an orb, so that's cool. Let's talk about this fight. <laughs> fight mechanics, 95 turn fight with 30 million total HP across both waves. 
Brave damage and gain is reduced between 70 and 90% throughout the fight. General team themes to counter the stage. Choose between two specific strategies. This is near required due to the limited selection of viable debuff heavy characters we have access to at the time of the release of this stage. Strategy 1. Debuff the main party via Caius or Yuffie. Those two are great. They are the keys to making this stage more tolerable. Strategy 2. At least two debuff heavy calls via Caius, Ferris, Ami, Titus, Gabran. Most players tripled up on these if they didn't use Kaios Yuffie in the main party, but high enough damage allows just two of these to be brought. And the nice to have one, having protection against the bosses can be very important. If not running Kaios, consider Maria who will shave before the enemy's turn. Orin is excellent given Wave 2's proclivity to turn warp. Yes, there are boss turn warps, many turn warps in fact. Um, Lena's overhealing and wide roll coverage is very useful. Selfie is defensive, blocking brave damage and frequently healing. And then, for the last two members of your party, they recommend popular damage dealers for this tier, included Caius, Jex, and the Trash Twins. Boss abilities to watch out for. So, <clears throat> wave one, on the ground, look out for another AoE Brave HP attack. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, they levitate, gain a lot of Brave, occasionally become immune to delay, reduce Brave damage further, buff themselves, and have either a hard-hitting Brave attack or a Brave gain plus full AoE HP attack. So, you know, there's a lot going on there. I just looked at in the screen here, and that boss had 150,000 um, Braves. So that's going to be good, good stuff. Um, they do have some attacks that have high turn if they break you, so be careful. We've fought these enemies many times now. I, I believe that these are more or less just the, the version that we fought in that Furion mission dungeon um, all that time ago, where these enemies are basically souped up from the Agrius Lost Chapter uh, stage. You know, they, they buff themselves, they gain a bunch of brave damage reduction until they're broken, um, etc, etc. So, this wave, more or less, you need to make sure you have a way to inflict at least 8 debuffs. Now, that's 8 debuffs total, so that can be 4 per enemy uh, if need be, but it needs to be done in one turn, and then that will proc through them plus 8 turns, which is actually pretty low. So, I imagine that um, <clears throat> this wave might give people some trouble if they aren't running a debuff heavy um, character uh, or team. So, alright, yeah, so that's wave one. Let's go ahead and move on over to wave two. Wave one is a bit of a doozy with the orb. Thankfully, wave two does not have one. However, these enemies are very, very annoying, and the mechanics here are pretty stressful. As you can see, Orm is just doing ones and zeros. Why is that? Let's talk about it. So, <laughs> the first tip that the Tom Murray Troop offers. Keep these damn things debuffed or prepare to reset. Anything less than 7 debuffs makes them extremely annoying. So, 0 to 1 debuffs on the boss. They will have Brave HP damage resist 200%. HP Brave damage up 50%. They will move next turn after each character turn. And their attack speed and defense will be plus 50%. The turn move is annoying, unless you're Orin. So their jump up, unless you have Orin. In which case, Orin is just going to just slap, slap, slap. So... Between 2 to 4 debuffs, HP Brave damage up 50%, they will then warp their turn up after each character, attack speed defense plus 50%. 5 to 6 debuffs, moves, they will then warp their turn up, attack speed defense plus 50%. 7 debuffs, they will attack speed defense plus 50%. And then 8 debuffs, none of these boosts or effects. So, in short, each time you move up a debuff tier, uh, they will lose a prior effect of the prior tier. So... <clears throat> Ideally, um, you want to have them at 8 debuffs, if at all possible. They, now, they are constantly buffing themselves. As you can see, they are giving themselves generics. So, if you don't have a, a reliable way to inflict debuffs, um, it's this is going to be pain. This is going to be pain. However, characters like Beatrix, Orin, are going to be able to take advantage of that turn warping by constantly doing their own counters and follow-ups and such. And so, you can actually use that warping to your advantage, if you so choose. Now, <clears throat> they will cleanse all their debuffs at 89% and 59% HP. So that basically means you have to start all over twice. So, well, three times if you count the start of the wave. But thankfully, they do cleanse at 89%, so you only have to burn them down 10% HP before they do their first cleanse. So, yeah, uh, this is why they recommended bringing three debuff heavy calls if you are not running Kaius or Yuffie in your party, just to help mitigate the stress from this wave, because, yeah, this wave is is going to be pretty nasty. They will also occasionally turn purple in color. When they do so, they will be dealing increased brave damage. They have a brave attack that heals them and grants them a 180,000 HP regen 
for three turns. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. So again, just to recap here, Wave 1 has the Orb. You need to inflict 8 debuffs minimum on a turn to proc it. Again, that can be spread across both enemies, so 4 per. Um, and then Wave 2 then does not have an Orb, but you need a bunch of debuffs to keep it under control because these enemies otherwise are horrendously aids to fight. And uh, yeah, it's going to be going to be pretty nasty. So with all that said, guys, we have talked about both the Crucibles and now the Reckoning stage. Let's go ahead now and transition over uh, to Opera Omnia, and I'll be talking about my comps, who I'll be bringing here, and why. Okay, so we have talked about the Crucibles, we have talked about the main gates. Here is how I'm going to be personally tackling each of these stages. So let's recap. The first, or th rather the left Crucible, requires a Black Crystal character. The enemies have high turn rates, they will take multiple turns in a row, they have punishing brave HP attacks, etc, etc, etc. Who, is that, who does that sound exactly 100% catered to? Come on, that's an easy one. I'm going to be running Orin, Ace, and Beatrix here. Now, Orin and Beatrix both are just going to just body the stage. Just 100%. It's going to be just a slaughter. I'm going to have an Ace as my burst synergy here. Ace is going to be just firing his traps off, getting that burst effect up, and then watching Orin and Beatrix just save the day. It's going to be just... It's going to be nuts. It's going to be nuts. Orin is going to cover everything, uh, and I also took off all of Orin's evasion passive, so that means every time he covers someone, he's going to get hit, which then will trigger uh, Beatrix's counter, or her follow-up coming off, and those two together, it's going to be melting HP bars. It's going to be fantastic. I really can't wait. This is going to be a really, like, meme crucible <laughs> for me. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going balls to the wall here. It's going to be a lot of fun. So... Left Crucible is just going to be a complete wash for me. If you do not have Orin, um, again, they did give some suggestions um, earlier on. Caius, Orin, Iroha, Golbez, Leon, Gladio, Shadow, Zack, Kamari, Kefka, Garland. I can all operate here. Gladio would pretty much fulfill Orin's role perfectly. Like, <laughs> those two are almost car carbon copies in that sense, where they're going to be kind of locking down this edge. I'm not saying those two characters are the exact same, because they're very different. But they do offer some similar qualities in terms of just being able to lock the stage down. And you really don't got to worry about it. Uh, you're going to be good to go. Um, you know, Zach will be having uh, that, those tank properties as well. He'll have his lock, so he'll keep your party safe. Yeah, this one isn't going to be too bad. Beatrix has the sap for me that I'll need uh, from her LD debuff. You'll be good to go. So, switching on over to the right Crucible here. We're going to be versing Howl's Moving Castle, the Bastion Giant. This one's going to be a meme as well. Uh, yellow crystal character required in the party. I already said in, in my uh, Crucible talk there that I was going to be drawing for Selfie's LD. And because the stage is 100% tailored made just for her, that means I'm going to be just slapping the stage around. So, I'm going to be running Caius, Caius, excuse me, Sink, Garland, and Selfie here. Uh, yeah, the, I don't got to worry about the orb with this. The best thing about this team is that each character also has a way of delay. Sync delays with every single attack of hers. Well, not every single attack, but her LD. Uh, and then both of her plus abilities and her EX will be delaying. She also offers launch from her EX. Garland will be delaying every single hit. So that's going to be glorious. Selfie delays on her LD use and then procs the orb and will be our aura bot. So yeah, this is going to be fantastic. Running Shiva as the summon here. Just for the extra turn rates. But I'm just going to just I'm just gonna go balls to the wall right from the gate. Karas may call Jack. Gabranth, all just getting all that stuff up, all the Bray damage up, the HP damage up, and we're just going to go to town. Um, there's not a whole lot to say here um, regarding my team, but again, some Yellow Crystal suggestions, uh, aside from Selfie, are Quistis, Tifa, Lael, Kais, Arden, Yishtola, and Desh. But again, just to, just to remind you guys, if you're not going to be running Selfie LD in your party, uh, then you will need um, a, a launch heavy team here uh, and some launch calls as well to probably try and fill in the gap there because again, it needs to be three player turns in a row where you initiate a launch to proc that orb. It is a whopping plus 15, so you won't have to proc it too, too terribly often, especially if you're running a burst plus character uh, where you can then have those, you know, bur both burst effects up. But um, yeah, overall, shouldn't be too bad. Just bring some delay. Uh, if you're not bringing delay, Make sure to bring some sort of HP damage mitigation or some kind of interrupter because this boss does hit very hard if you give him a chance to act. So, those are both the Crucibles. And for those of you that have watched my past um, 
Dimensions End videos where I like to talk about these stages. You guys already know I like to load up one Crucible with my Ace team, that's the team I'm going to take into Reckoning, and the second team then is just kind of like a meme comp where I just get the Crucible over with and done, and then call it a day. Now if you guys had to guess, which team do you think is I'm going to be taking into Reckoning? Shouldn't be too hard to figure out, right? So, the team I'm going to be taking into the Reckoning stage is... Beatrix, Ace, and Orin. I know, shocking, right? Very strange. Now, the one thing I am concerned about with this team are the debuffs. So, specifically, Wave 1. Uh, Proc in the Orb is going to be a challenge here because none of these characters individually can inflict the required 8 debuffs total I'm going to need to proc it. Which means I'm going to have to dip into one of these calls here uh, to do so. I'm thinking I'll probably have to use Ferris's call and I'm just hoping that from then I can just kind of body uh, the rest of the wave with this comp and race that orb. Because again, the orb does not appear until 79% HP. So that's a free 20% I have to get kind of set up, get people, you know, get ready to go, and then just hit the ground running then as soon as things start getting balls to the wall. Kind of the same deal though, Orin is going to be locking things down, Beatrix's counter will be going off every single time he's getting hit, Ace is going to be the extra brave damage from his uh, burst effects, his card effects going off, etc, etc. So it's going to be great. That wave one, I think, as long as I can just manage the orb, it's going to be fantastic, no problems. Wave two, this is this one's going to get kind of weird. So, again, uh, you want to have, at bare minimum, I would argue probably seven debuffs on the enemies at all times because that removes their warping ability they'll start behaving at that point and they just have um, the stat increase I think it's what is it uh, attack speed let me double check here I think it's attack speed and defense uh, plus 50 percent yep okay and that's what that's with having seven debuffs and then that will be the only boost they have ideally you have eight debuffs if you're running Kaios or Yuffie you don't gotta worry about it you're good to go with eight debuffs then these enemies will not have any of the prior effects active and you're good to go now again, 89% and 59% HP, they will completely cleanse, so um, you'll probably, at least what I'm planning on doing, is as soon as that wave starts, I'm pretty much just going to just, I'm not going to use any calls, I'm just going to just get them down to 89% normally, let them wipe all their stuff off, um, you know, and then uh, I'll make sure to inflict a couple debuffs, because I do want to get, I want to make sure they have at least one debuff, so they don't have the 200%, let's, let's go over this one more time, because this is, this is so funny. 200% Brave and HP Damage Resist, okay, 50% HP Brave Damage up, and then they will warp, and they have the 50% extra attack speed defense. Um, so yeah, I want to make sure that they have at least two debuffs on, okay, on both bare minimum, because that removes their massive, you, they can't take damage <laughs> aura, and Orin thankfully can do that himself with one use of a skill one, he'll inflict two debuffs on each enemy. So we'll be good there. Um, but yeah, past that, I'm going to make sure, let's just see, because I'll probably have to use both Ferris. If I can manage it, I would love to only have to use one Ferris call for Wave 1. That way I would then have another Ferris call for Wave 2, and then plus my both my Gabrants and then both my Amis. That would ensure that no matter what, I can always make sure to flood these enemies with debuffs at a moment's notice, um, and make sure that I keep their, their garbage as, as pain-free as possible. But yeah, if I can get into Wave 2 with having only used one Ferris call use, and then both with both Gabrants and Ami, um, I should be great. I should be great. The one thing that's that could be a problem is Ace with his LD debuff, the way that works, is where he'll inflict a one-turn debuff, I think it's called Whole Card, and then when Whole Card expires then, it inflicts um, something stu Blind Stud, which is a separate debuff, and then Whole Card will actually fall off. So that will immediately mean that the enemies then will have a free uh, buff slot open, and then there's at, at at best then they would have seven debuffs active. So I'll have to I'll have to be careful to manage that. Um, you know, I don't I can't just blindly just tap Ace's LD and just laugh out loud as the enemies melt. Um, I will have to give some consideration to it, but I think overall this team is going to be fantastic. Um, I, I'm feeling very very confident. Um, in this in this reckoning tier, and uh, yeah, feel very very good about this team getting it done. If this team does not get it done, I'll probably sub out Ace for Jet, and I know for a damn fact that team will get it done because uh, Jet with these two would be just 
he <laughs> wow that'd be funny um but yeah so that's those are my teams for dimensions and transcendence tier six guys so please let me know down below what you guys think about this tier and who you'll be bringing crucible one just a quick recap is the turtle and the kraken so either break uh, via, via debuff or have sap slash brave damage either or to proc the orb wave two then requires launch on three you know consecutive turns player launch and then uh, the first wave of the Reckoning tier requires eight total, eight or more total debuffs being inflicted on the enemies. So again, you can do four debuffs on enemy A and four debuffs on enemy B and that will proc it. The Reckoning stage I think here is, is the big problem. Um, and and the Crucible, the right Crucible again with the, with the castle is it, just, the orb is just so catered to selfie. It's, it's really obnoxious. <laughs> so... I don't really have many many kind words to say about that one, but I think the Reckoning here, especially Wave 2, is going to be a big challenge for some players. So I'm going debuff heavy calls, I'm just not even going to fuck with it, and yeah, I'm just going to just blanket the Mantis and enemies and just call it a day. So yeah, again, thank you all so much for watching. Big shout out again to the Tomberry Troop and Sefi for their contributions to this video. Appreciate you guys, thank you so much for your hard work. And yeah, I will have another video up here for you guys here um, very soon with my dimensions and clears should be fun. I will do a little bit. I'll probably do a little bit more commentary before each um, run just to get, tell you guys, remind you guys that, you know what I'll be doing in each stage um, and some suggestions for who you can use as well. So yeah, take care, everyone. Thanks again for watching, and we'll talk again soon. See you later.